أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين All praise is due to Allah who seek his help and his forgiveness Whomever Allah guides no one can misguide and whomever Allah leaves to go astray no one can guide I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger uh, My dear brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah last time we talked a little bit about Surah Al-Takathur I will quickly go over it because uh, we had connection problems last time and then we'll continue the part where we stopped at inshallah. So Al-Hakum Al-Takathur, as we said last time, Alhamdulillah, Al-Hakum means distracted you. Al-Takathur is reproduction, whether it comes to money, wealth, children, etc. So the fact that the humans are always after wealth, after uh, bigger family honor, etc. They get distracted, it makes them forget all about the purpose for which they were created. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Hakum al-Takathur, that these materialistic things distract you from the purpose for which you were created. And we talked about how the Prophet sallallahu told us that even if the son of Adam had a, a valley, and this is what a valley looks like, a valley full of gold, he will seek a second one. And if he had two valleys of gold, he will seek a third one. And that subhanAllah tells you like how the human never stops looking for more wealth and for more riches. And we give the story of Prophet Isa alayhi salam and the man that was with him and how at the end of the story, um, everyone ended up killing each other just to get the gold. And none of them were able to even get the gold because subhanAllah, they didn't even enjoy it at all. So um, the Prophet told us that if even if you have two valleys of gold, you will still seek a third one. And as we said, some people even thought that because they were rich, that they shouldn't worship Allah at all. As mentioned in Surah Sabah, they said, we are more rich. We are richer than you, talking to the Muslims and the followers of Prophet Muhammad. And we have more children than you. And since Allah gave us all of this, that means he prefers us over you. Look at how arrogant, subhanAllah. So Allah gave them all these blessings. And instead of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said it's because Allah loves us. He, 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 he thinks we're better than you. So he gave us all these riches, all these children, but you don't have anything. Then Allah responded, uh, It is not your wealth. It's not your children that bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course it's your good deeds. So, uh, and then we move to the, so we said the story of Prophet Isa and his companion, then we move to the second part, Hatta zurtum al-maqabir. Hatta means until, zurtum means you visited, and then maqabir is the plural of maqbara, which is the graves. So the first verse tells us that you forget about your purpose because you're too busy focusing on the materialistic life, until until you visit the graves visiting here means death like you go literally you go into the grave and just like ali ibn abi talib radiallahu anhu the cousin of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the people are asleep until they die this is when they wake up and they realize subhanallah i wasted my life i wasted so much time that i could spend doing good deeds helping people doing uh, whatever I can to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when death comes to us, this is when this veil that was in our eyes, this is when we wake up and we re we see the, the, the results of what we have done in this whole life. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that three people, uh, three things follow the, the dead person to his grave, his family, his wealth, and his deeds. Two of them go back, his family and his wealth go back and the only thing that stays with him is his deeds. So the, the scholars like uh, At-Tabari, for example, said that the, this verse, Hatta zurtum al-maqabir, refers to when we go to the life of al-barzakh. So there are three kinds of life. The worldly life, the barzakh life, which means the life in the grave, and the third one is the life of the hereafter. So some people, as we said last time, started denying that there is a life in the grave and they were using some illogical arguments. And we said there is a lot of hadith, there is a lot of ayat. The way the, the, way the information 
about the qabr, the life in the grave, or hayat al-barzakh, was transferred to us, is called tawatur, reached the level of tawatur, which is the same level of authenticity as the Qur'an. So these people who deny the life in the grave, they're actually putting themselves on the first step of doing something that is worse, which is denying verses of the Qur'an. May Allah protect us all from that. So some of the ayat uh, are a lot in the Qur'an, and I'll mention just one hadith, um, which is includes, the Prophet included some ayat in the hadith. And the hadith, subhanAllah, is, is very important for us to know so that we believe in the life of Al-Barzakh, we get ready for something like that because the Prophet ﷺ told us to talk about death a lot so that we remind ourselves of the hereafter. It's a famous long hadith by uh, Al-Bara ibn Azib, the companion of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. So Al-Bara ibn Azib, he says that one time after they went to, um, to bury one of the companions who died, so he was still in his lahd before they, they put him in the grave and closed everything. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting next to the grave and he had a piece of stick in his hand. And he was poking into the ground. And everyone, Al-Bara ibn Azib says, all the companions are sitting next to the Prophet ﷺ as if birds were on their heads. Meaning they were motionless. Meaning if there was a bird sitting on their head, the bird will not fly because he will think they are statues. So the Prophet ﷺ said to them, تَعَوَّذُوا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ Seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. So meaning say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ So the Sahaba said, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ We seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Then the Prophet ﷺ started telling them this long hadith. Inshallah, I'll try to summarize it. He said that the believing man or woman, إذا كان في انقطاع من الدنيا وإقبال على الآخرة, if they are in their last minutes, خلاص, they are dying. Angels descend upon them from the heavens. And these angels, and we're talking about the believing man or woman. These angels' faces are so bright as if they were the sun. And they sit in front of the believing man or the woman. And the angel of death sits on, like right where the head is of that person. So the person who's dying, he hasn't left this world yet, but he can see them. And those angels, they have the hanut and the kafan, the things that will be wrapped, he will be wrapped in from heaven, a kafan from heaven, just like the kafan we have here, but from heaven. So now the person who's dying is seeing those angels ahead of him. And he sees, and the angel of death is at his head. So the angel of death says to his soul, come out to Allah, to Rabbin Radin Ghayri Rabban. Come out to your Lord who is pleased with you and who is not angry with you. So the soul comes out in such a peaceful way, in such an easy way. The, the Prophet ﷺ described it in the same way a drop of water falls from a bottle, easy and slow and smooth. And as soon as the soul comes out from the body of the believing man or woman, and it's in the hands of the angel of death, the other angels that were st sitting in front of him or her, they immediately go to the angel of death to try to take it from him. And they take it from him and they put it in that kafan from Jannah that it smells so, so amazing. So after they do that, they take him and they go, they take the soul. The body is on earth and the soul is coming out now. So the angels take the soul and they are going out ascending to the heaven. So the other angels that see that happening, they say, what is that amazing soul? Who is that amazing soul? That it smells so amazing. And they say, this is the soul of so and so. And they call him with the best of names that he or she used to be called in this world. So they keep ascending up to the first heaven. And you know, we believe in seven Samawat. So they knock on the doors of the first heaven and the angels open for them. And the angels of the first heaven they go, they walk, they, they ascend in the janazah, subhanAllah, the, the word used is to, 
they ascend, they are as if they're walking in the janaza of that beautiful, amazing soul. So they go, all of them, to the first heaven, to the, to the second heaven, and they knock on the doors of the second heaven, and the same thing happens all the way to the seventh heaven. So imagine all these angels, subhanAllah, walking in the janazah, but instead of walking ahead, they're walking up because they're ascending to the heavens after that. And they are so happy with this amazing soul of the good doer, of the person who spent their life doing good deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until they reach the seventh heaven and it's open for them. And then they hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Uktubu kitab abdi fi alliyin, which means write the book of my slave in the highest level or in the book of Aliyin in Jannah above the heavens. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angels, now take the soul of my servant to earth, to the grave, because Allah recites the verse, minha khalaqnakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from earth and to earth we shall return and from earth we shall be resurrected. So the angels take the soul of that person, the good believer, and they take it down to the grave where the body is. So once the soul comes back to the body in the grave, the angel, the two angels come to that person in the grave and they ask him three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is the messenger that was sent to you? And he answers, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam, and my prophet or my messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they hear a call that he is telling the truth. And then it is said to them, Afrishu albisuhu min al jannah, give him garments from Jannah, or give her garments from Jannah, and spread for him or her a carpet from Jannah in his grave, and open for him or her a door from Jannah. So they get the blessings from Jannah through the door. They get this relaxation and peaceful life and amazing life from Jannah because of the door that is open to them. Then it is said, extend their grave as far as their eyes can see. So the grave is extended as far as the eye can see. Then a man comes, very handsome looking man, smells very good. And he says to the believer, in the grave, Abshir billadhi yasurruk. I am bringing you a lot of good news. So he says, who are you? MashaAllah, your face is so handsome. And you look like this, the person who would bring a lot of goodness with him. And he says, Ana amaluka salih. I am your good deeds. So he says, as soon as he sees all of that, SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all of those who see all of these amazing things. And this is going to happen, subhanAllah, to, I hope to all of us, inshallah, someday, this is definitely happening. So he says, oh Allah, aqim as oh Allah, make the day of judgment come as soon as possible. Because of the amazing things he sees, he knows or she knows that there's a lot more, a lot more to come in Jannah al -Firdaus. That's why they want the day of judgment to come as soon as possible. So this is the first part. The second part of the Prophet ﷺ tells us if this same thing is happening to an evil person who was a disbeliever, the angels descend upon them from heaven. But these angels aren't like the other ones whose faces were as bright as the sun. Their faces are so dark. And the angel, and they come with a kefen from Jahannam. Their kefen, the, the wrapping, is from Jahannam, from the hellfire. And the, the, the smell is so awful. And the angel of death sits at the head of the deceased. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. The, and the person can see all of that. He can see the angels. He hasn't left this world yet. And this is when it is no time for repentance. There is no way for them like Fir'aun when he tried to repent. It was at that time. But that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept their repentance. So the angels do the same thing with him, except this time the angel of death, when he tries to take the soul out, the soul is trying to run away. The soul is going here and there, doesn't want to come out. 
And this is, subhanAllah, um, the verses uh, in Surah Al-An'am. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَوْنَ عَذَابَ الْهُمْ the, the verse is here, if you, O Prophet, could only see the wrongdoers in the throes of death, while the angels are stretching out their hands. Stretching out their hands, meaning with the punishment, as mentioned in Surah Muhammad, explained in Surah Muhammad, when the angels of death come to the evil person, Extending their hands, meaning they are punishing them on their faces and on their back. Saying, give up your souls. That's because the soul doesn't want to come out of the body. So the angels are saying, give up your soul. Let the soul come out. Today you will be rewarded with the torment of disgrace for telling lies about Allah. And for being arrogant towards his revelation. SubhanAllah, so the soul doesn't want to come out. The soul sees the angels. It knows what is coming is worse. It can see the kafan from Jahannam. It doesn't want to come out. It doesn't want to leave because it knows what's waiting for it. So the angel of death pulls out the soul in the same way as the Prophet ﷺ described it. In the same way, spikes of steel are pulled out from wool that is wet, like very violently. And this mention on Nazi'at Gharqa in Surah Al Nazi'at as well. And then the soul is taken up to the heaven. And on the way, the angels say, What is that evil soul? What is that awful smell? And they say, This is the soul of so and so, naming him with the worst names he was called or she was called in this world. When they knock on the doors of the first heaven, the angels do not open for them. And the Prophet ﷺ recited the verse in Surah Al-A'raf, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَاسْتَكْبَرُوا عَنْهَا لَا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلُ فِي سَمِّ الْخِيَارِ And this is the picture here. I want you to imagine this needle as mentioned in the verse. I'm sure you've all seen a needle, unless you're from the Generation Z or these people who don't know these things, subhanAllah. The needle's so tiny and the hole that you take an hour sometimes trying to put the thread or string through the, the hole of the, uh, or the eye of the needle. The verse says that those who deny the verses of Allah, the signs of Allah, and they were too arrogant to accept it. لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء The doors of the heaven will not be open for them. وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ And they will not go to Jannah unless the camel passes through the eye of a needle. Which means it's impossible. It's like saying when pigs fly, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using this image to give us the meaning that a camel will never pass through the eye of a needle and so will never the soul of an evil disbeliever go to Jannah or the doors of heaven will be open for them. So this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describing when the they ask for the heaven doors to be open for them. Then they hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Uktubu kitab abdi fi sijin fil ardi sufla. Write the book of my slave in sijin in the lowest of earth. You know, just like we believe there are seven heavens, we believe there are seven earth earths. And there are some theories about that that the scholars talked about, but this is not the topic today. So his book is written in the lowest of earth. Then his soul is sent back to his body in the grave. And then the two angels come to him. They say, who is your Lord? Man Rabbuk. And he says, huh? Huh? I have no idea. Who is, uh, what is your religion? And he says the same thing. Who is your prophet? He says the same thing. Then they hear a caller saying that you are a liar. You are an evil soul. And then they hear the same call saying, spread for him carpets from the hellfire and give him garments, clothing to wear from the hellfire and open for him or her a door from the hellfire and the qabr, it, it shrinks on them until their, their ribs, subhanAllah, are like, they, they are destroyed in this manner when the grave smashes them because of their evil deeds. And then they see uh, a very bad looking man coming to them, smelling very bad and saying, and as soon as they see him, they say, 
who are you? Your face is the face that comes with bad news. And he says, I am your evil deeds. I am your, I'm the, all the evil deeds that you did in this world, and I'm here with you. And the person says, SubhanAllah, the first person was saying, Oh Allah, make the day of judgment come as soon as possible. Now this person will say, Oh Allah, do not make the day of judgment come at all. That is because they know that what is coming after that is so much worse than what, are, what they are experiencing in the grave. So the Prophet wasallam is telling us this description so that we have faith that there is this second type of life. As we said, there are three kinds of life, and this is the second one, which is the life, the life in the grave. Now, the, 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 the second verse, the third verse is, Kalla sawfa ta'lamun. And this is also related to the story that the Prophet wasallam mentioned. Kalla means, indeed, you will know. And this is like a threat. Indeed, you will know. Meaning, when you see the angels, and this is the description that I just gave, when they see the angels, this is when they know for sure that what that they have been asleep, that they have been distracted by the materials of this life, by the lusts, by the desires, and now they can see, now they are waking up, now this veil has been removed. So the first part here, كلا سوف تعلمون, is a threat to them, you will see. Then it is repeat, repeated, ثم كلا سوف تعلمون, which, and the word ثم here, the scholars in Arabic, they say it is used to say there is, in Arabic when you use ثم, it means there is a, a period of time between the two actions. So كلا سوف تعلمون, this is the threat. And some scholars, some of the interpreters said, the first kalla sofa ta'lamun refers to the time when they see the angels with their, with their own eyes. And then thumma kalla sofa ta'lamun, the second part kalla sofa ta'lamun is when they see the, um, the, 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 the punishment in the, in the grave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a threat to those people who are too arrogant to accept his verses, to follow his verses and to follow his signs and to do good deeds and stay away from evil that they will see two things the angels when they come as we describe them and then the resurrection or the the punishment in the grave or the the two things that other like ibn abbas said they will see the first one in the grave and the second one in the hereafter when they go to jahannam so two threats one in the grave and one in the in jahannam so this is we describe now we go to the fourth verse kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al-yaqeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them here indeed if you know the knowledge of certainty kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al-yaqeen and the scholars talked about the knowledge of certainty the kinds of yaqeen knowledge of yaqeen seeing of yaqeen and experiencing yaqeen and these three are mentioned in the Qur'an. Ilm al-yaqeen, ayn al-yaqeen, and haqq al-yaqeen. And I'll give you a very, very short example, inshallah, so that you can understand the difference between the three, because two of them are mentioned in this surah. The knowledge of yaqeen is your faith and knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, for example. Or your knowledge that the Kaaba is in Mecca and it exists there even though you've never seen it. Then Ayn al yaqeen this is when you go to Mecca and you see the Kaaba, for example, with your own eyes. And then Haqq al yaqeen this is when you touch and experience, like if you touch the Kaaba and you experience being around the Kaaba, this is Haqq al yaqeen And this, subhanAllah, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, for example, he believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exist he believed that Allah was the creator of everything more than any one of us he's a prophet he's a messenger he received the revelation but we know in Surah Al-Baqarah he said Rabbi arini kayfa tuhi al-mawta oh my lord show me how you bring the dead back to life so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him awalam tu'min aren't you a believer didn't you believe in me he said qala bala yes indeed I believe in you he said, now he wants to transfer himself from the knowledge of yaqeen to the ayn al-yaqeen, 
right? He wants to see it with his own eyes, right? So he had ilm al yaqeen he had the knowledge of yaqeen, certainty of knowledge. And he wanted to be transferred from the ability to see it with his own eyes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to bring qalifa khud arbatan min al tayr He took four birds, etc. And we know the story. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, uh, is telling us in this verse, kalla law ta'lamuna ilm al yaqeen if indeed you know this knowledge of certainty, you would not be distracted. You would not be distracted from the purpose for which you were created, which was the first verse that we talked about. So if you have this knowledge of certainty, if you know what is going to happen to you before you die and right after uh, you go to the grave, etc., you wouldn't have been distracted in this life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ And this is an oath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ Meaning, by Allah, you will see the hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كَلَّا سَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ He is giving us the threat. Indeed, you will know, you will see. And then he says, by Allah, he's swearing to us, by Allah, لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ you will definitely see the hellfire. And Allah says, وَإِمِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Every one of us will see the hellfire and will even cross over the hellfire, over as sarat in order to go to Jannah. Or some of, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us, some people are going to fall into Jahannam. لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ So you will see it with your own eyes. Allah is swearing, by Allah لَتَرَوُنَّ الْجَحِيمِ ثُمَّ لَتَرَوُنَّهَا عَيْنَ الْيَقِينَ Then you will literally see it with your own eyes. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Then you will be definitely asked about the blessing that you had in this world. And in this verse, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's a, a story where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that verse to, the, to his companions. And it's an authentic hadith. One day the Prophet ﷺ comes out of his house and he sees Abu Bakr and Umar in the masjid. And he says to him, what brought you out? And they say, we are hungry, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet ﷺ says, this is the only reason I come out of my house as well. I am really hungry. So the three of them decided to go to one of the Sahaba, one of the companions. So they go to the companion and they ask him, for something. So the companion goes and brings them some dates, some water, and he sits them under a tree so that they are under the shade of the tree. So the Prophet ﷺ and the two companions, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhu, they start eating the dates and they start drinking the water under the shade of a tree. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Wallahi hadha na'im alladhi satusaluna. This is the kind of blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable for, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you about. SubhanAllah just dates and water under the shade of a tree. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not after the, any pleasures in this world. He said in an authentic hadith, if I had the size of Uhud, this is the mountain Uhud, my brothers and sisters. See how big it is, SubhanAllah. If I had this amount in gold, this size in gold of this mountain. I would be happy to spend it in the, on the poor within three days, not keeping any of it with me, except if I have debt, I would keep some of it to pay off my debt. So the Prophet ﷺ was not after this. He knows that when Jahannam, see Allah says, ثُمَّ الْيَقِينَ You will see it with your own eyes, and some of us will even May Allah protect us all. Some people, not us, inshallah, will even fall into Jahannam. The, the, the hellfire, when the angels see it, subhanAllah, when the angels and the, the prophets see it, they all go down for sujood out of fear of the hellfire. These are angels that never did any sin. And they say, subhanaka ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadati. Glory be to you, we did not worship you enough when they see the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire. So the Prophet sallallahu didn't live this world in order to be super rich and live a super luxury life, just not care about anything. He lived it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, yesterday I was watching the news and 
um, I heard about three people, three, my, my, they are billionaires or something, and they are going on vacation. They are going on vacation, supposed to be eight days, but it's to space, vacation in space. Eight days, and it will cost each one of them $55 million. Each one of them will pay $55 million to go on a vacation in space for just eight days. Imagine how much money they have, like if that's, if that's their vacation for eight days. And I want you to think about what the Prophet Sallallahu wanted from us and what Allah wants from us if we have this amount of money. Not to spend $55 million on eight days vacation, but to spend it to help our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere. My dear brothers and sisters, so this is the end of Surat at takathur Allah ends it, ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنْ نَعِيمٍ Allah will hold you accountable, will question you about all the blessings you had, even if it's just a piece of date. So don't waste anything. Anything that remains with you, give it to the poor. And remember, subhanAllah, Allah ends with this, that he will question you about Naim. And he started with al hakum al takathur He's telling you that this Naim that Allah has given you is the reason that you're forgetting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not forget about Allah. Do not forget about his blessings upon us. And let's help our brothers and sisters as much as we can, inshaAllah. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم يا الله bless you all for attending to learn about Allah and the Quran may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from Jahannam protect us from عذاب القبر protect us from all kinds of evil and may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the ability to be very generous to help our brothers and sisters who are suffering everywhere in the world Amin please let me know if you have any questions and inshallah we'll do the kahoot if anyone is interested in the kahoot after that وإياكم sister Shazia we have a question here from Sister Sabine. Let me make the comments uh, for everyone so that it's not, um, yeah, it's everyone now. When does time of repentance run out? Question mark. If one, for example, is told that they have some terminal disease, can they still repent? So the time of um, repentance runs out it, when the angels are there, when the person can see the angels with their own eyes. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts the, uh, the repentance of one of, of any of his slaves as long as Malam uh, Yugharghara is like the sound that you make when the soul is coming out of the, of the, of the body. So when the soul comes out of the body, but I mean like at that point, the person will not have any ability to say anything. But if the, peer, if the person sees the angels, this is when it's over, khalas. He saw the angels of death coming with the kafan. The angel of death is at his head and the other angels are in front of him. This is it, it's over, he cannot repent. And this is exactly what happened to Fir'aun and he actually said it. Fir'aun, the arch enemy of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, he said, Amantu billadhi amanat bihi banu Israel. I believe in that which the children of Israel believed in. And Allah says, Al Now you're saying it, Khalas, you see the angels. The angel of uh, Jibreel was putting the mud in his, in his mouth so that he doesn't say. And then the second part of the question, and uh, sorry, the other uh, time also is when the sun comes out of the West, which is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. Uh, when the sun comes out of the West, instead of rising from the East, it will rise from the West. Once people see that sign, خلاص, it's over. No one can repent at that time. And then the second part of the question, if one, for example, is told that they have some terminal disease, yes, and this is subhanAllah. There's a beautiful hadith that um, I want to mention too. The Prophet says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا عَسَّلَهُ That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves somebody, he, asala, uh, subhanAllah, is, is like uh, taking, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, 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 the Sahaba didn't know what it means, so they asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them to do a good deed right before they die, right? So if a person has terminal disease, absolutely fine, they can repent, this is actually the mercy of Allah upon them, they can repent and they can do as many good deeds as they can, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even remove their sins because of that disease that they have been through. 
Sister Sadia is asking a question. Sister Sadia. Where does the soul go immediately after death? So in, in the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib, the Prophet ﷺ told us that the soul, so it comes out of the person as soon as the angel of death takes it out. So it comes out of the body. Then the angels take it up to the heavens. And they keep asking the, the, the angels in each heaven to open the doors for them until they reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I'm sorry, until they reach the seventh heaven and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, send the soul back to the earth because this is where I created them from. This is where they will go back and this is where they will be resurrected from. So the soul goes back to the, to the grave. And this is when the angels come and this, this is when they open the door for the person uh, from Jannah or from, uh, may Allah protect us for other people from uh, Jahannam. Does that answer your question, Sister Sadia? Alhamdulillah. Wa iyyakum, Sister Sadia. Any other questions, inshallah? If there are no other questions, we'll start the Kahoot, inshallah. It's about Surah Al-Fatiha. It's uh, about the meaning of the ayat in Surah Al-Fatiha. And inshallah, it will be very quick. If you are interested in waiting to review or to participate, you are more than welcome. If you are done, you can leave, inshallah. Oh, let me cancel the recording because it's going to be a long video. I mean, stop.